Beeling have refined their SER5 series, now unleashing the maximum Ryzen 7 performance for gaming and heavyweight tasks and still keeping very reasonable price. Is there a catch? Let's inspect! Hey everybody, good to meet you here. I'm Michael, the Tech Mishka, and over here we inspect a lot of cool and interesting tech. That's a mini PC, and in a matter of fact, a few months ago, I've reviewed the SER5 Pro by B-Link. This here is called the Max. Very similar, with one major difference, that a few months ago I was testing the Ryzen 5-backed edition, and they have decided to re-release this mini PC with a bit better specification, Ryzen 7 CPU, and basically unleashing the full potential of the platform because they've brought it to the maximum available TDP for this particular processor. So, in this video, a lot of tests and different use cases in order to find out whether that's a really good Windows 11 Pro mini PC. The SER5 Max is an aggressively priced mini PC starting at just $419 with its top configuration hosting 32 gigs of RAM and 1TB NVMe drive and its $499, a setup which well rivals some way more expensive desktop PC solutions and at the same time is much more compact and less power hungry. Beeling have, of course, some serious competition, Minis Forum, Morphine, Gigabyte and many other vendors, but when it comes to value they are hard to beat. The unboxing part brings some good news, not entirely refined or changed, but there certainly are some steps towards making sure the brand is well recognizable now. There even is a greeting. Well, hello to you too. Short user guide, then comes the mini PC itself. I really hope you're gonna realize how small it actually is. Please memorize this statement stamped on the folio. Basically, B-Link recommend you to do the Windows 11 setup offline so that you can create a local account. You probably have heard about Microsoft's obsession to make you log in with your email online. It certainly has some advantages, but I also still prefer the good old local PC account. A brand new design of the power adapter, slim and stylish, so much better than what we got with the Pro model. If only a USB Type-C was implemented, that was about to be great. HDMI and DisplayPort cables included and a VESA mount. That's what you get in terms of accessories. What we see on the outside of this mini PC is quite standard. A lot of ports on the rear side. You can connect up to three monitors, a lot of USB devices. There's a LAN port and you have USB connectivity on the front alongside with a 3.5mm port. Both side areas are covered in mesh for effective airflow. If you care about the hardware on the inside, I have plenty of information about it. Two DDR4 DIMM modules, a Ryzen 7 5800H processor, M2 SSD for storage, Wi-Fi 6A X wireless, AMD Radeon Vega graphics, very compact size, just 500 grams of weight, and Windows 11 Pro is the operating system. If you're new to the world of mini PCs or desktop PCs, maybe some of these specifications are exciting you a lot and they should because the platform is fairly decent. Truth is that B-Link are integrating inside primarily components suitable for laptops, which is not bad because at almost the same performance you get such a reduced shape and size and significantly reduced power consumption. The processor that we have inside is 5800H Ryzen 7, famous for exceptional performance. It's a kind of a three-year-old CPU and it's paired with DDR4 memory and at the time I record this video DDR5 is already a thing, however the performance boost is not that significant, meaning that if we compare the platform here against the 13th generation of Core i5 CPU with DDR5, I would say the difference is not going to be that big, especially for daily tasks. The GPU is discrete, it's integrated in the CPU, it also benefits from the increased TDP and we're going to do some testing. Before the testing, however, let me show you about repairability and upgradability. Beeling are, as usual, not making your life unnecessarily harder by letting you easily access most of the internals. Once you remove the cover, you can easily make your way to the 2.5-inch HDD slot and service some of the other components inside. This fan looks familiar, and you can well notice the plant B link are following here. The exhaust air is supposed to leave the chassis through the side cuts. 
Many hardware makers lately try to limit you in terms of upgrades, but here not only we can swap the installed 1TB NVMe, but also we can swap the RAM modules. These are actually good DIMMs, having two modules means faster communication to the CPU. The maximum supported capacity for this TV box in particular is 64GB. The storage is made by Crucial, the P3 Plus model in this particular case. Note that other batches might be equipped with something else. This here is QLC-based NVMe, meaning that sustained writing speeds may not be perfect, but the drive is overall good for the starting price of around $94 on the aftermarket and has shown acceptable performance during my tests. Apparently, the Wi-Fi module is also swappable, therefore, if we talk about repairability and upgradability, it's present here as long as you don't want to swap the system board or the CPU. Yet another important note is the fact that the current configuration is fairly good for what this platform provides, meaning that you can't go for much faster RAM than that and you can't jump to DDR5. Bottom line, I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing. Time for some stress testing. As a starter, the CPU ranks a tad better compared to the predecessing Pro model. The reason is that B-Link are now letting you use the full 45 watt TDP that the CPU can go for. We talk about a single digit percentage increase, but it seems to be well worth it. The price that you pay, though, is measured in decibels. Not only the CPU runs quicker, but also we have a positive impact on the inbuilt GPU and gameplay for some of the famous titles is clearly slightly better with it. CSGO may struggle to deliver great results in 4K, but tune it down to 1080p and there you go with some pretty decent gaming experience. If we have to be entirely fair, Vega 8, which is the iGPU here, has been released in 2018 and if we compare to a current dedicated GPU generation, let's say the RDX 4050 might be around 8 times quicker in certain conditions. But it also requires a lot more space and consumes a lot more energy. The graphics performance here is rather comparable to a basic adapter like the GTX 1030. While gaming might not be the strongest side, in 1080p resolution you're gonna still be able to play even some AAA titles with certain limitations about details and refresh rates. When it comes to the multimedia, the SCR5 Max shines. Splendid performance and for most of the tasks, the available resources are a lot more than what you may actually need. 4K movies are not a problem. Streaming, listening to music, it's all possible without any restrictions. And you can even connect up to three monitors, which is quite nice. Clearly, the display port in the HDMI out are easy to guess, and the Type-C on the front is where the third source may originate from. Office tasks are another usual concern for people. I won't comment much about Microsoft Office titles like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, because they are fairly lightweight. Some more intensive apps like Adobe Lightroom run fine over here. For large-size RAW photos, the system may struggle a bit. Video editing is possible, but everything above 1080p and even some high-intensive motion graphics is gonna remind you that you're not running a dedicated GPU. If you need to handle big files, it's also fine with the remark about the drop in writing speeds which may occur after some minutes of heavy load. Online browsing is perfectly fine, and in order to make it clear, let me put it like that, for most daily tasks, this mini PC is on par with my video editing laptop, with the major difference that SCR5 Max doesn't have powerful graphics adapter. The software present is, as mentioned, Windows 11 Professional Edition. This is the best version you can get because it has all the features you may actually need. No matter how much you stress it, it's gonna be fine. Updates are ongoing, the operating system is licensed, which makes this particular mini PC an even better deal. Should we think of any possible drawbacks? I think the fan noise has been the only showstopper to me. You can tune the RPM down from the BIOS, just be very careful. Also, the system lacks eGPU support, and maybe I should also point to the use of QLC NVMe instead of TLC-based one. All of that is of course meant to keep this mini PC price lower. In the end, it's yet another mini PC masterpiece by B-Link. I already think highly of the SER5 Pro, but if you have the chance to grab the Max, 
instead of the Pro that would be even better. Although if you already have the Pro I don't see too many reasons why you should upgrade to the Max because it wouldn't feel like a very meaningful upgrade, probably a single digit increase in terms of performance percentage. But overall that mini PC for this price point is rock solid and one of the best that you can buy using the Ryzen 7 platform from a couple of years ago and delivering fantastic performance and very reasonable power consumption. So that's my take on the SER5 Max. In case you have questions or you want to share about your particular experience, please comment down below the video. It's usually more information about the product, some ways to support the channel and the work here, and um, anything else you want to get to know about me, you can find it in the video description area. Thank you for watching, wish you a fantastic day. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you soon. Bye!